Hello guys and welcome back. In this video I'm going to talk about the echocardiographic assessment of aortic regurgitation. This is part one. I'm going to divide this video in a few parts. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like this video and to subscribe to my channel. So let's start with the echocardiographic assessment of aortic regurgitation. One of the most important things is to assess the mechanism of aortic regurgitation. Aortic regurgitation is the result of aortic cusp abnormality, aortic root dilatation or a combination of the two. In all cases, the mechanism of aortic regurgitation should be characterized descriptively. It is useful to classify the mechanism of valve insufficiency into one of three subtypes. First, we have type 1 aortic regurgitation, which is characterized by normal cusp motion within the context of aortic dilatation or cusp perforation. Then we have type 2 aortic regurgitation, which describes excessive motion such as cusp prolapse. And type 3 aortic regurgitation, which is the consequence of cusp restriction, such as aortic stenosis. The functional classification is a useful tool that helps clinicians systematically evaluate the valve behavior and may influence the type of intervention chosen for the valve. Now let's talk about the echocardiographic assessment of chronic aortic regurgitation. In some circumstances, aortic regurgitation is obviously mild, in which case quantitative measures are not of use, will likely be challenging to obtain and are of questionable accuracy. In such a scenario, confirming the mild nature of regurgitation using multiple acoustic windows and planes is sufficient. In all other circumstances, the British Society of Echocardiography recommends that quantitative or semi-quantitative techniques are employed to assess the severity of aortic regurgitation and are coupled with corroborative findings. Before we start our assessment, some general concepts for color Doppler assessment of aortic regurgitation are worth noting. First, it is important to visualize the three components of the color jet, flow convergence, vena contracta, and jet area, for a better assessment of the origin and direction of the jet and its overall severity. Here in these pictures is an example of the three components of the color jet. First we have the flow convergence zone, followed by the vena contracta and then the regurgitant jet area. The second general concept for color Doppler assessment is that color Doppler jets are dependent on the systemic blood pressure, but also ventricular compliance. Third, take into consideration that aortic regurgitation jets are frequently eccentric, moving in or out of the plane of view. Constrained by the left ventricular outflow tract or entrained within the left ventricular outflow tract, leading to rapid jet broadening. And fourth, because of these variable characteristics, color Doppler jet length or jet area from any window should not be used for assessing severity of aortic regurgitation. Now, what are the qualitative parameters in the assessment of aortic regurgitation? 
First, we have the continuous wave spectral Doppler intensity. The intensity of the continuous wave spectral Doppler envelope offers a simple visual assessment that can be used to provide a general impression of aortic regurgitation severity. Technically, the density of the spectral Doppler signal is proportionate to the number of red blood cells traveling within the regurgitant jet. A weak or faint signal would indicate only mild regurgitation, whereas a very dense signal is consistent with moderate or severe aortic regurgitation, but is not able to conclusively differentiate the two. The continuous wave spectral Doppler intensity is unreliable with eccentric jets, which may be transected by the alignment cursor and consequently underestimated. Conversely, a narrow regurgitant jet well aligned with the continuous wave Doppler beam may appear dense and overestimate the aortic regurgitation severity. Machine settings can also result in errors in assessment of severity. To limit errors, just adjust the velocity scale and optimize the signal gain and reject. Unfortunately, qualitative parameters such as this one are subject to inter- and intra-operator variability, further limiting their reliability. That's why it's recommended that continuous wave Doppler intensity is only used as part of a multi-parametric approach in the assessment of aortic regurgitation severity. Now, what are the key points of this method? The use of continuous wave spectral Doppler intensity may provide a general impression of aortic regurgitation severity. Given its inherent limitations and poor reliability, this technique should only be considered alongside other more rigorous parameters of severity. The next qualitative parameter is the color flow convergence zone. Color flow convergence is based on a qualitative visual approach using multiple anatomical windows. A small color flow convergence hemisphere suggests mild aortic regurgitation, while a large hemisphere visible throughout diastole suggests severe aortic regurgitation. There are several limitations associated with using this technique, including jet momentum, jet direction, and orifice geometry, which as a result of invalid hemispheric assumptions may lead to under or overestimation. In the setting of confined flow convergence zones, such as perforation and commissural lesions, and obtuse flow convergence angles, such as cos prolapse, assessment of aortic regurgitation severity using the color flow convergence zone should be treated with caution. When using this approach, there may be value in utilizing a multiplane function so that the color flow convergence zone can be visualized in two orthogonal planes simultaneously. Particularly for eccentric jets, multiplane imaging may optimize the visualization of the three components of the color jet essential for measurement of the color flow convergence radius. 
For all jets, attempts should be made to slowly pan through the color flow convergence zone so that it is captured at its maximum dimension and without hemisphere distortion due to coaxial imaging. And of axis imaging should also be considered where needed. Thank you for watching the part one of the echocardiographic assessment of aortic regurgitation. Make sure to watch part two. Thank you for watching and don't forget to like this video and to subscribe to my channel. Bye.